much from it. Cherry, it's like the fruit, right? Is that that? Like a fruit. Yes, okay, so you're, thank you. You're doing a like one, two, three hack. No, we're we're good. We're we're scrolling. live and we're gonna roll with it. And uh, Coach okay, Cherry Sigmund, right? Yes, Cherry Sigmund. Awesome. And you're an expert in cybersecurity. Twenty years with the Department of Defense and in yes. roles to protect our country. Thank you, by the way, for helping to serve. It's awesome. And you're My with pleasure. the Pentagon and. We're really here to talk about Bitcoin and Litecoin and wow, I mean, this is such a big topic. I know just two months ago, I'm snowboarding with my son and he's telling me about this, really the first time I was hearing about it and I, I, I'm <laughs> sitting there off the slopes and I, I buy some and I'm up like 250% in just you know a month and a half, two months. It's, it's amazing where this is going. So maybe you can help us understand what is it? Like what is Bitcoin, Litecoin, all this stuff? What, what is this? Okay, basically it's a new way of transacting, transacting business and it's an alternative to traditional paper money called fiat. Uh, it came about uh, many, many years ago when people were looking for alternatives um, to uh, transacting business online and cutting out third party risk and having big institutions control the money. So a lot of fellow nerds, not me, I, I didn't do it, I can't take credit for that. A lot of fellow nerds and uh, geeks who are really smart about things uh, came up with alternative ways of digital payments, electronic payments. Kind of like you have Apple Pay or you have uh, PayPal and just digital intermediaries that transact funds and do remittances across the globe. Bitcoin and digital currencies are called cryptocurrencies, leverage technology advances in crypto cryptography, um, proof of work, proof of uh, stake, di different technical terms like that, and not to go down a rabbit hole with technology and, and geek speak. But basically they use a combination of technological advances to come up with a digital asset class called cryptocurrency, of which Bitcoin and Litecoin are examples, along with many other buzzwords and coin names. Okay. that have come out in recent years. But basically it's an alternative to transacting in gold or paper, anything else across the history of man that could be transaction, transacted in terms of value. Or where people did transactions, whether it was land, food, supplies, dowries, whatever it might be, where people gave animals or property or gold or anything you can think of. It's just another way for person A to transact something of value to person B, but without the intermediary of a big institution. Okay. So one of the benefits, and it's still kind of up in the air as to how it's going to shake out and the volatility and the risk involved in all of it and people putting a lot of money in it, I would recommend you just put very little, nothing that you don't want to, you can't afford to lose, don't put okay. your mortgage on it, nothing more than 10% in any type of quote investment anyway. Okay. It's just not, it's what I do, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just a crypto nerd and a cybersecurity professional, so I can't give financial advice, but what I personally, Cherry Sigmund, am doing is just playing in the market a little bit, putting no more than 10%, and I'm just looking at it as, this is what I can afford to lose, let's see how this goes and how the markets emerge and, and how things shake out, and it's too, too early to determine. Okay. But I wouldn't recommend that anybody make an instant reaction based on a social media post or what somebody says. As always, do your own research, read the white papers, which is basically a fancy nerd term for saying a prospectus or what you would get with a mutual fund or a stock. It's just the document that describes what it is, mm -hmm. who the team is, what the risks are, what the, what the what, you know, potential projections are, that sort of thing. So I'd recommend you mm -hmm. look at the team, look at the white paper. If they have an initial coin offering or initial, or I'd call it ICO, an initial coin offering is kind of like a traditional business, an IPO, where mm -hmm. you have initial public offering. It's a way for a company to raise money and get funded. Look at that, see if that's scam, check out the reviews, that sort of thing. But don't make any sudden reactions, don't make any sudden decisions or knee-jerk reactions and put a lot of money in something without taking your time, slowing down, and doing your own research before you do anything with blockchain technology or, crypt or cryptocurrency. Wow. Or any new technology, because you know, don't, don't, fight, don't feed into the hype. Don't, mm. and don't, there's something it's people like have called fear of missing out, FOMO. I see it a lot on the chat boards, a lot on the, the, the Facebook groups, the private groups, and the other things I follow in the tech world. People have this fear of missing out. It's like, oh, I might miss the bandwagon. Mm. Well, I wish I'd have done a dot com, or I wish I were in Silicon Valley, or I wish this, or I wish that, or I missed out. Well, you know, what if I knew about the internet before it became the internet, when it was still with DARPA? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what if? I'm afraid I'm going to miss out, so I'm going to take this money and I'm just going to splatter it against the wall and invest in all mm. these things. Right, and right. then next thing you know, your spouse is like, honey, uh, huh, what's this BS right here? Right, what right. did you do? And then it affects your personal life. So I would recommend caution mm -hmm. and don't, don't 
cash in on the craze or the fad or the hype and whatever it is, any type of technological advance. Just don't 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 give into the hype and the buzz and bet yeah. the farm on it because things change in things technology change. and in a lightning speed and as time moves on technology advances get faster and faster. Well, let me, so I just recommend caution. Okay, so let me ask this. Is, is it is it safe though? I mean is is Bitcoin real? I mean it almost seems like it's just some like like I don't know. I mean, it, it, it seems like it all works the way it's supposed to, but is it a legitimate, like, who's the sort of wizard behind the, the curtain, right? I mean, I feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz. Well, that's the beauty of it. I'm glad you asked, Rich, because there is no one person that centrally controls it. The whole idea behind the movement behind cryptocurrency uh, as an asset class, not a real currency, is that it's decentralized. And there is no all-powerful one institution or third-party intermediary that you have to trust and wait on and pay huge fees to. Like, like if I want to send money to Europe, mm -hmm. I have to go to a bank and do a wire and go through all of that stuff and the foreign transaction fees or things like that. Even a credit card purchase, you have foreign transaction fees. Mm -hmm. With this type of technology, it's A to B through a distributed ledger Okay. that's public. And after the transactions are verified, you don't have to pay the bank fee or the wire fee. Which I love. I mean, compared to a fee. Western Union, compared to, you know, I mean, I, I think my accounts go backwards if they're in checking or savings because of the fees at the bank. But how does it increase that? I mean, it's almost like it's a stock, but it's not a stock. I mean, we're showing returns of like 3,000% in the last year and a half or so, right? I mean, it's, it's there and we don't have a middleman, but yet it's growing. Why, how can that happen? How can we be making money in something that... Well, you don't make money until you cash it out. So it's That's paper, true. It's paper, it's paper so, or wire. And so it's like you don't have a capital gain on a piece of real estate until you... Cash it out, some, right. You sell but it. how does it actually so increase? I mean, it's not... It's market. The supply and demand. People want it. People believe in it. People want it. So it's the more politics, it, it's things, things change across the world. Like, say, one country, XYZ. We won't name any countries because I'm not here about politics. I, yeah. do, I do not discuss politics. I do not discuss religion. Spoken like a true uh, um, analytics safety protecting our country, which we appreciate. Yes. So thank yes. you. <laughs> on, on the very conservative approach, we do appreciate yes. and respect that for sure. So keeping politics, politics to the side and countries to the side and that stuff, but reality is, I guess, supply and demand. And as more people purchase, it raises the price overall, but it's yet independent. Like it's an independent... It's sort decentralized. Decentralized. It's decentralized. Okay. It's, it's more more of a power to people instead of large institutions and governments. And I, I will say this in terms of countries and politics. Say if a if a country bans a certain thing, it can have a, a, an effect based on how people perceive it okay. in, in the market. So that's what I mean about changes in um, in things happening in the world. It's like a world event can affect a stock. Yeah. Like, right. Okay. So when 9/11 happened, okay, mm -hmm. everybody remembers where you were on 9/11. Mm -hmm. And what happened in the financial world after that and the rebuilding and all of that. So stocks immediately tumbled. Exchanges were shut down. It's the same type of thing. So any type of world event can have an effect on any type of asset class mm -hmm. or potential investment. Yeah, definitely. So it's just like that. So okay. when things happen across the world, it's the same, not the same as a cat you know, catastrophic level is the catastrophe and mm -hmm. the tragedy of that. But just as an example, it's something that people can easily can relate to when something yeah. significant happens or when you have a, you know, Puerto Rico mm -hmm. or, or Texas or anywhere where you have a natural disaster or something that's not normal in an, in an average person's daily life mm -hmm. can have a ripple effect on what happens in any type of asset uh, class. No, no doubt. Okay, so I think Amazon now let you pay with Bitcoin or Litecoin, right? Is, so, am I, is that accurate? So a, a lot of actually online merchants. Is that right? Not just Amazon. I mean, Amazon seems to be a pretty well-known player and they accept <laughs> yeah, it, right? Yeah, I've heard of them. You know, I think I got a gift card from that right, company. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, they're sort yeah, of Amazon, out there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, that, yeah. It's like everybody in my family shops at Amazon. Right. And now <laughs> you're saying, is it true that Amazon does accept Litecoin or Bitcoin? Am I Bitcoin. accurate? Bitcoin, okay. Wait, the terminology. So, yep. Let's get this straight. So okay. it's all buzzwords. Bitcoin, Litecoin, and you're calling Ethereum. all of them cryptocurrency. That that is the term. The Which, technology, yeah, the technical term is cryptocurrency because it's based on cryptography and, and those cryptography. other nerd things I told you about. Okay, but so really smart people detail. got together and created a digital. safe digital way to exchange money without the banks or others 
being involved so we can exchange things easier in a, in, in, from a transaction standpoint. Is that right, or, or to exchange anything about it. it doesn't have to be like fiat currency. It's not like just not remittances for big banks. You can think of it in terms of anything that's of value or service. For example, you could use it for any type of transaction. Say I'm a business owner. Okay. And you offer consulting or coaching, you could yeah. accept Bitcoin. You could accept any other cryptocurrency if you wanted to. Like, just okay. like you could take PayPal or credit card or, or fiat currency or cash. It's just a way to transact value from person A to person B without that big institution. Okay. And then the other thing is a lot of people in other um, less lesser developed countries are called the unbanked, where they don't have big banking institutions and things like that, the infrastructure in place for that. Mm -hmm. With something like a digital currency, people who are, quote, unbanked, don't have large banking transactions, don't have credit lines, trade lines, those sort of things. They can actually use a cell phone. They can use a mobile device, which they may have hmm. okay. the infrastructure for that in their country. They can use that and buy digital currency and do transactions A to B for whatever that store of value might be okay. in that country. So it's a way to equal the playing field in the um, undeveloped countries and first world countries. Hmm. So is Bitcoin in the United States more expensive than if I were purchasing it in Europe or know some other country I mean, it, 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 it depends on certain countries it depends on the demand in that country and it depends on which exchange okay um, so there does it all go into the same bucket it, it's no because it's, it's distributed so it's not just one big bank it's like like the huge world bank it's not it's not like that okay. you have several exchanges and people all across the globe have different ways and some exchanges don't take citizens of some countries yet because of the the, uh, the lack of regulation and oversight and governance in this yet because it's, because it's so new. Right, right. So some exchanges, hmm. foreign exchanges, won't accept U.S. citizens. I've, I've actually logged into several just to test it out because before I say anything, I always go in myself and check, and it, check out. it out yeah. with my own two eyes. Right. And I would log into an account and test it, and at the very end, it would tell me, sorry, we don't take U.S. citizens. I'm like, okay, well, okay, now I know. Make that on my note and, and share that with my, my folks. Interesting. Just don't bother wasting your time on this because they don't accept U.S. citizens. They don't accept people from Singapore or whatever country. So each country, wherever the exchange is hosted, has their own laws. Because there's not a lot of governance on this yet. There's not a lot of legal oversight. Okay. The United States is very hmm. proactive in terms of uh, getting to the point of where we have governance. And that's good because otherwise, without governance, it's the wild, wild west. Right, right. So that's my personal opinion. But yet still, there's not a lot of regulations on this yet. So not yet. How will this, does this have any impact that you can see positive or negative from the stock market standpoint or for financial advisors that recommend, you know, certain portfolios or stocks or managed portfolios? Will, will this have an impact there? I, I know some firms I have read in the news have not allowed their advisors to engage in this. Like JP Morgan initially said, no way, no how, and then I think he rebuked saying, wow, this stuff is real. So right? that, that's still evolving, that's still mm -hmm. being uh, shaken out across the across the board depending on the country and the institution okay. you're talking, talking about, but it, it's so new and so rapidly changing that what is true as a, a fact or what somebody believes to be a fact today could change overnight or within uh, an exchanges, it could change within minutes. Because mm. there's there are things you can track in, in terms of hours, weeks, days, even hours and seconds. And that, to answer your question again about price, it depends on where you are and where the country is, whether or not they accept you as a citizen in their exchange, whether or not they'll let you transact business on their, uh, their exchange. Mm. And some countries, um, say, example, part A of the world, I won't say a country or a region because I don't want to offend anyone, mm. but certain parts of the world value it more. And so the price there on their exchange might be a little bit higher than in the U.S. Mm. Interesting. So it just depends on the exchange and where and okay. what the market is. If that snapshot and the snapshot could be down to the hour or less. Okay, got it. It changes really fast. If you notice, it changes. Really yeah, fast. it moves so fast. quick. I mean, one day it could be up sixteen percent, then it could be down twenty percent. You know, the next day. And but yeah, it's mind-boggling, it isn't it? It's <laughs> amazing. I mean, it seems very volatile, but yet when you look at it over time, certainly it's continued yeah. to improve and get better. So. Let me just summarize. So the overall, we would call this um, uh, the currency that you named it is the cryptocurrency. cryptocurrency. OK, so cryptocurrency is the category. And then within that, we have several, you know, Bitcoin and Litecoin and Eurocoin and lots of them out there. And this was developed by some really smart people, which I know you call nerds, but we really smart people, right? I mean, that uh, have found a way to create these back end algorithms that allow us to um, exchange currency um, without the middleman, 
is there, right? Would that be like the banks and such things like that? So, um, and then you said to watch out for, like you said, if we're going to do this, don't put more than 10% in, um, do no, our anything. homework. Of anything. Of anything, <laughs> okay. Do be okay to lose it because we still don't know. It's still early, but yeah. you know, uh, I who don't would have, have thought about the internet in the day, right? We're like, <laughs> right, hey, exactly. this is crazy or dot com, but who knows? It could go, it could not. There's a lot of things that have not done so well along the way too. So um, do our homework, white papers, 10%, don't put stuff in that you're willing to lose. Any recommendations? If, if those out there might be thinking about investing, what else should they do besides do some more? And where would they look for some of these white papers? Like just go to the internet? What are the reliable sources that we can do some research? Well, each of the uh, each of the vendors uh, have their own own, own own websites where they promote that. There are several other review sites. Um, since this whole interview is unscripted, I, I don't want to name one one site or the other. I would just recommend using a search engine first, whichever one you prefer, okay. and going from that, and then going to uh, one of the review sites that actually covers this okay. without giving one credits to. Uh, one side or another because this is unscripted and I haven't had a chance to personally Yeah, no, that's bet fair. No, and, thank and you for your honesty with that. I don't endorse anybody until I do my own, you know, live yeah, what I preach. I, I do my that. own research and, and I know of several, but I haven't really dug deep into all of them yet. So I don't have okay. one favorite that I go to. So I'd recommend just go to your favorite search engine, type it in and find out just based on your search terms. Type in cryptocurrency. Type in type cryptocurrency in... or whatever the buzzword of the day is or whatever the currency you're interested in because okay. there's over a thousand types of coins now. Well, that's the thing though. Is there it's, over a thousand? Yeah, so you have the that. big ones, the big four, okay. and then you have wow. the, uh, the what they call the altcoins, the alternative coins, the side Bitcoin. It's just really, really, you're going to go down a rabbit hole and get into nerd land really wow. fast if you start talking about all the names and, and, and what sectors of industries they're in because there's, there's a coin for just about every industry right now. <laughs> oh, is that right? There's wow. little smaller coins, but they're, they're all speculative. The but whole yet, the whole thing speculative. But yet we seem like we like you're saying rabbit holes, I and mean, we could start searching, and then we got this, and we got that. I mean, it's like, you know, back to the tyranny of the urgent, right? That's what happens. There's just <laughs> so much coming at us, so much yeah. information. That's why I appreciate your you know honesty and and realism to just give us the truth, the raw truth. But those next steps, like they get in a search engine, and now it's like bah, you know, there it's like so much information. Is there a better way to get there and learn a little quicker than doing that. There, there is one gentleman I know of in Silicon Valley uh, who, uh, who has a, a newsletter that's coming out. I'm not sure if it's published yet. It's called CryptoSumer. Okay. But uh, go, Google CryptoSumer, and he ha he'll have a free newsletter that's geared for the consumer market. Okay. And um, I, you might want to check that out. Okay. But I'm not sure Good. if it's published or not. We talked several weeks ago, and it was still in the beginning phases of, hey, I'm going to do this to educate the public. Yeah, it's, it's just called still CryptoSumer. So but other than that, uh, I think it's just going to review a lot of the, the other stuff. Wow. But other than that, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I Any other say... closing <laughs> remarks or thoughts? I mean, thank you on the education and next steps and where what this is because I I didn't know, but it's such a hot topic. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd say ping me for the nerds okay. and contact yeah. me for everybody else. What would else? be a best way to get you? What would be a best way to ping you for anyone? Is there a good way to uh, ping you? Uh, find me on LinkedIn. Actually, that, that's okay. probably better because that's a uh, professional network and that's how I do most of my communications. I don't like okay. to give out my personal phone or anything. Yeah, like that. absolutely. And I, don't, yeah. I don't do a website around this yet because, again, I haven't done all the all the, uh, the personal vetting of anything I would want to okay. recommend on the website. So as in cybersecurity, a lot of things that happened and what at first attracted me to this topic was the security aspect of it, how it could potentially improve security. So we're kind of low-key and off the radar. Yeah. So I don't know if I'll ever do a website on it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so it may just be referral only. It's like, hey, come talk to me, or so-and-so has my phone number, call me, we'll do a little chat like this, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. But okay. a, a lot of things in the security in the world that I've served in in the past with the national security type positions, you don't, you don't really just like – you don't say a whole lot on yeah. purpose. Yeah, right. No, I, and I appreciate so. the respect that yeah, you so, did so. fill us in a lot, yet it's uh, still something to uh, uh, be cautious of, I guess, at the same time. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, fair enough. But Good. I'd love to do a follow-up if you want sometime yeah, as this things evolve over time yeah, and, and I have time to actually to vet other things that I could recommend to you for your audience to, to know about as I have time to personally vet them and be more informed of what they actually contain. Yeah. And then we'll you know, go from there if you'd like to follow up. So I'm here in the local that area. Works. Yeah, absolutely. And Appreciate we're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area today. So yeah, and, and maybe a quick shout out. I know banking you're, hub. you're big into the Wounded Warriors and, and just bought some land out in Asheville. And yes. um, a, a, something that if wow. anyone's interested in that. And I know we may have some, some celebs out there that uh, play football or different things like that that I know you were you know, saying that maybe that'd be a cool thing to have someone endorse you and help with that. So 
and he went to interested in wounded warriors and, and your cause. I know I have a huge passion for that. Any quick thoughts on that? Well, that I can definitely speak to, and thanks so much for uh, thinking, of me, thinking of me and uh, the people in serving that. I have a, actually have a passion project to help other veterans. Uh, I'm an Air Force veteran. Uh, help pay it forward and help make their transitions easier in life than mine was. And so I bought some land, like you said, uh, near Asheville, North Carolina. I plan to buy some more near Clemson, South Carolina. Um, shout out to my alma mater, Go Tigers. Uh, so it'll be one in North Carolina in the mountains and one in South Carolina. And it's the first of two many safe harbor retreat centers where the veterans can come and connect with business leaders in the local community and go through coaching programs and things like that and have service providers come in and give them anything arranged from A to Z in a very safe setting where the focus is on them. They don't pay for a thing. They come, they're honored guests. They have the mm -hmm. whole weekend to just have a retreat away from life's responsibilities and have service providers and people come in, nonprofits, people come in who already do this type of work, just bring them together and have a safe harbor retreat center. So that's, that's the mission there. And I just bought the land closed last week and planning to do a design build to get the first structure built uh, in, near Asheville. And then after that, down near Clemson, and uh, after that's done, do a blueprint, do an open source project and have other people provide ideas on how to improve it and then offer that back to the world as a blueprint for other people to do it wherever they happen to live for their own uh, local uh, veterans in whatever city or country or even um, a place that they may live. So that, wow. that's the idea behind that, the Safe Harbor Retreat Center. Great. You can Google that, it should be out there pretty soon because it's, uh, it's fresh off the press, just closed last week. You can't, the, the, I mean, the ink's barely dried on the, on the closing documents. <laughs> wow, well thank so, you, Cherry, thanks. so much. I mean, an expert and also just giving back and really passionate. Thanks for serving our country. It's My pleasure. Appreciate you a lot, thanks.